And uh, I went to one of those like turquoise lake in the high mountains of British Columbia, which has, you know, it, which is like really, really flat. And I grabbed a rock and I threw it in the lake. And I'm like, I'm gonna start with point zero. What the heck is a wave, right? So I threw it in the, in the lake and the, the rock hit the surface tension of the water and sure enough, the waves came off and I could see that if you cut, if you bisected the waves, uh, you would get this up and down motion of a sine wave. But something was not quite right. If you have this up and down motion of the wave, it's only a result of that rock hitting the surface tension of the water and pushing the molecules away. So you have to account for that force too of the rock going through the water. So if you account for the causation of the wave and the wave, then you, you get a different model. You get a model of like more of a cone because the, the rock is sinking and the wave is going out. And that's when it hit me. Oh my God. I realized what had happened. This is this two-dimensional problem again. Guess what? Our universe is not on the surface screen of an oscilloscope. <laughs> Our universe is in spherical coordinates out here, okay? And so what happened is that because physicists and mathematicians are really not good in dealing with rotation and angular momentum, torque and correlates effect and all this, they flattened the wave. They made it like this. So what I did when I had this, this elimination of the cone, I went to the side of the lake on the sand and I drew a wave with a stick, but then I put a line through it like this and I realized that the wave is actually a 3D vortex. Can everybody see that? And I was like, oh my God, they flattened the wave. That's why I'm confused. Nothing in the universe goes up and down like this. Everything in the universe orbits and rotates. This is when I, you know, this, this is one of the reasons that Einstein field equations are not complete. It's because the torque and the coreless effect that's resulting from rotation is eliminating, eliminated by attaching the frame of reference to the rotation of an object. When they calculate the forces involved in a black hole that's rotating, they attach themselves to the black hole so that they're rotating at the exact same rate so they don't have to deal with torque. Go ahead. Does rotation have something to do with time and the way time is interacted with? Yeah. And we're going to see that in a minute. So, um, you know, imagine that there is, I'll give you a simple example. Imagine that there's an electrical motor turning in front of you and there's a shaft and you're going to try to grab that shaft, right? Now, if you grab that shaft and you're, uh, you know, you're not moving with it, you're gonna get heat, you're gonna get torque, you're gonna get all sorts of effects, right? Thermodynamic also. Your hand is gonna start shredding, right? Okay, but if you turn with the shaft, then there's no force, you see? Now that's a big difference, okay? If you're calculating things where things are turning with if the observer is turning with the thing, then you're going to miss a lot of forces. Imagine, for instance, calculating the forces that are going on in a galaxy. Uh, 
300 billion stars orbiting, right? But instead of instead of um, of of being a, an observer looking at the object orbit, you're attaching yourself to it. Then there's not going to be any forces. That's a big omission in current physics. But what happened there is that I realized that the that this that the waveform is not a thing that goes up and down like this, but actually a thing that goes in uh, orbit. And when you look at it that way, then the wave frequency, the wave amplitude, and the wavelength are all a result of angular momentum, rotation. You see? That's not being accounted for. When you look at the sun and you imagine the electromagnetic field of the sun coming towards you, typically you're imagining something coming towards you like this, right? But actually it's coming towards you like this, right? And uh, so I was excited about that. I'm like, oh my God, okay, this, is, this, is, this works. This, it's a vortex. And then I was, lean, I was leaning back on the sand and I was looking at the sun go behind the mountains as it was setting. And I thought, isn't it cool how we always think the sun is like setting but actually it's the earth that's turning? And as I thought that, I, I had another illumination. Oh, mechanically. And I thought, Wait a minute. We've all been taught in our current understanding that the sun is here in the center of our solar system, right? Uh, since Galileo and Copernicus. And that the planets do something like this, right? Is this true? No. <laughs> That actually has nothing to do with the dynamics of our solar system. Although this is taught to all children uh, at school, even in my school there was like one of those little devices, you know, that you turn the little thing on the bottom and the planets go around the sun. I don't know if you had those, but I had those in my school. And it's actually completely incorrect. Here's our closed um, isolated system binding us in the butt again because the sun is moving 200 kilometers per second and the planets are following at the equator of the sun generating a huge vortex that has nothing to do with planets coming back onto themselves over and over again See how different that view is just from not going with a closed system? Right? And I realize it's all vortices. Now, when you look at it, you could say this is 2000, this is 2001, this is 2002, and so on right like the earth well this distance has nothing to do with the same point in space-time after a year of rotation around the sun the earth is millions and millions of miles away from where it was last year Do you see how that starts to open your mind, open your consciousness to what's really occurring? Does that mean I'm still one-year-old? For me? Does that mean I'm still one-year-old? What do you mean? Well, there's no birthday, so you never get back to the beginning. Uh, yeah, there is. Well, you know, the birthday, uh, actually there is still a birthday, and that's when you were two and you were three because you were changed. In fact, if the Earth came back onto the same space-time coordinates, then you wouldn't change. 
It would be the same year. Every year it would get really boring. <laughs> so that, like Groundhog Year, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and so you, you, that I realized why every moment is a different moment. Every mo moment is a different moment because we're moving through the geometry of space-time. And every movement through, every point on that spiral is a different point, is in, is in a different relationship to everything else. 